Hey there, welcome to the Flute 360 podcast. I'm Dr. Heidi K. Begay, and I'm a flutist, educator, coach, and podcaster. My God given mission is to serve you. I am passionate about guiding you, the modern day flutist, to discover your unique voice on and off the stage. The goal of this podcast is to help you thrive both as an artist and as a musicpreneur. Go ahead and grab some espresso, your favorite notepad, and let's get to it. Today's episode 285 is titled, Empower Your Healing, Options and Actions for a Healthier You. Hey, hey, Flute 360 er Are you navigating a gap year between academic chapters or are you venturing into life after your degree? I'm Dr. Heidi K. Begay, your friend and professional mentor through these transformative times. This academic year, Flute 360 is opening its doors to just 10 private students. If you're looking for a mentor who offers more than just technical advice, if you need real support and someone to keep you accountable, I'm here for you. At Flute 360, we pride ourselves on providing personal, customizable support that nurtures not just your musical talents, but every aspect of your life. Embarking on a gap year is your chance to refine your skills and define your future. With Flute 360, you gain a holistic support system that integrates your health, your artistry, and your professional aspirations. Remember, Everything is interconnected. Your well-being, your musical excellence, and your career success. So, if you're ready to take a definitive step forward in this crucial year, let's make it happen together. The opportunity to be one of the 10 is precious, and the deadline is August 1st. Secure your spot and ensure this year is not just a pause, but a leap forward. Reach out today and let's craft your future at Flute 360. Hey, hey there, Flute 360 er Welcome back. I'm Heidi, and you've tuned into a very special episode. This year, or these past two years, has been quite the journey for me, filled with both challenges and significant growth, especially concerning my health. As many of you know, I've been navigating through a neck injury, and along this path, I've picked up some invaluable lessons about healing, lessons I believe can resonate with anyone, no matter your current health situation. So today, I want to share these insights, not just as tips, but as part of a larger conversation about empowerment and understanding our own bodies. So let's settle in, maybe with your warm cup of tea or coffee or a shot of espresso. I know I've got mine. So let's dive into this together. The reason I feel called to go through this information with you is because there are a lot of you right now dealing with health issues. I am so sorry, and my heart goes out to you. Thank you so much for expressing your concerns through our Flute 360 Family Private Facebook group. I really, really enjoy reading your comments. So this episode and its content is customized to your hurdles. Whether you are going through a shoulder or hand injury, maybe you're going through back or hip pain, I hope that this information finds you well and gets you moving in the right direction. So my personal disclaimer is that these nuggets have come from my own journey, and I'm relaying this information from my own unique perspective. Please, please, please take this as a starting point, but it's your responsibility to hire a medical doctor, a holistic doctor, perhaps a chiropractor, and the like to give you real medical advice 
that's going to help your unique situation. So let's get into it. One of the most profound realizations I've had through this process is the importance of being your own advocate. What I've learned is when it comes to our health, sometimes the only person who can truly represent our needs is ourselves. I remember feeling somewhat overwhelmed and unsure during early doctor visits, but I knew deep down that if I didn't speak up for myself, no one else would. It's not always easy, and my heart goes out to you, especially when you're feeling under the weather, but standing up for your own health is so crucial. I encourage you, no matter how difficult it may seem to be the voice that your body needs. If a treatment doesn't feel right, or if you have doubts, please express them. It's your right to understand and agree with the direction your healthcare is taking. Now, the next thing that I want to bring to your attention is finding the right doctor is also crucial. Finding the right doctor can feel like searching for a needle in a haystack at times, but it is an imperative step. I went through a few doctors before I met the right one who ended up being Dr. Bo Sauls through the Kinetic Center of Dallas. Each time I thought, maybe this one will understand. And when they didn't, it was back to square one. Or at least it felt that way at times. But when I found Dr. Bo, it clicked. He listened. He truly listened in a way that no one else had before. And if you find yourself struggling to connect with your healthcare provider, remember, you're not alone. I've been there. And I'm here to help guide you, just like I do in our accelerator program, pointing you towards someone who will listen and address your needs effectively. So if you haven't found that right health care practitioner right off the bat, that's okay. Research, go to Google reviews, ask friends, notice what your friends are saying through Facebook or Instagram. There are people out there willing to help you and willing to meet you where you are. You just have to be courageous to find the right person, the right doctor who's in alignment with you, your goals, and the situation that you're in. Another thing that I highly recommend is to have high communication skills. Effective communication is more than just talking. It's about listening and being understood. I learned this vividly during my treatments with Dr. Bo. Initially, I had been told to use heat for my neck, which I did without question. But during one of our sessions, when I mentioned this to Dr. Bo, he corrected me. It should have been a routine of ice, then heat, then ice again. This minor correction made a huge, significant difference in my recovery. This experience taught me that clear and continuous communication is key. It's about making sure that you and your healthcare provider are on the same page every step of the way. So going back to that ice, heat, ice therapy, if I didn't accidentally bring up the fact that I was using heat on a regular basis, I would have been experiencing more flare-ups than I would have liked to have gone through. And so it just happened, I don't believe in accidents, but it felt like accidentally I mentioned that I was using just heat. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you what, Dr. Bo's face lit up in not the best way. His eyes got huge and he's like, girl, we need to change that right now. For you and for your specific condition, It's ice, heat, and ice. That one little accidental remark that I made made a huge transformative outcome 
in my rehab process. So I tell you this because being an effective communicator can unlock things that you were unaware of. It can open doors. It can open up new insights to the situation and bring more information into your world to get that much closer to clarity and achieving clarity for your healing. Now, another thing that I want to bring to your attention during your rehab process is consistency. Okay. Your best ally in your rehab is to be consistent. Now I get it. It can be daunting when you're handed a list of exercises, feeling perhaps like you're staring up at a mountain too steep to climb. I've been there looking at that routine laid out for me, feeling the weight of it all. But here's something that really helped me breaking it down into what I call exercise snacks. Doesn't that sound like fun? Instead of doing everything at once, I spaced them out throughout the day, maybe some in the morning, some in the afternoon, and some in the evening. Because I know me, I have a very all or nothing mentality, and I have to give myself systems and things to actually support me through my rehab. And what I was noticing, if I wasn't thinking about this concept of exercise snacks, if I wasn't doing all 10, 20 exercises, I was doing none of them. And I didn't want that. I wanted to see progress. So hopefully this concept of exercise snacks makes it more invigorating and fun for you as well. So by doing this, this not only made the routine more manageable, but it also kept me in tune with my body's needs. It's just like when you're practicing flute, right? Short, focused sessions often lead to better results than trying to cram in everything all at once. Now, the next nugget that I want to bring to your attention is I would really encourage you to reduce the inflammation in your body. Adopting a holistic approach to health for me has opened my eyes in many, many ways. It's not just about the physical aspects. It's really about the whole picture. Reducing inflammation through your diet, sleep, for example, has been a game changer for me. Now, I want you to research this, and I will provide links in the show notes below. But check out the term anti-inflammatory diet. Now, when you hear that word diet, I know that could sound like a four-letter word. And it's not meant to be that way at all. I want you to think that it's an overall health lifestyle choice. This is something that I implement from the beginning of the day, throughout the day, and into the night. And so I say this because it's a lifestyle change. It's not just one meal here, one meal there. It really is this true holistic approach. Now, when you read the list of anti-inflammatory foods and inflammatory foods, what to eat, what not to eat, again, customize it to your body. I don't know if you have, let's say, an autoimmune disease or something that would get in the way of your healing. This is where you being accountable for yourself and checking in with a health practitioner is so crucial. So. Anti inflammatory foods can be really fun. When I typically tell people, like, check out your diet, they can get bogged down. They can get really stir crazy and think, oh my gosh, like, here is a routine that I can't have fun with. You can. I encourage you to look at the list of anti inflammatory foods and notice what foods excite you. If you have, I don't know, let's say blueberries, pineapples, and cherries on that list, but you cannot stand (laughs) the taste of cherries, then focus on pineapples and blueberries. 
There's nothing wrong with that. So find what excites you. Listen to your body. Ask your body what it needs, and it will guide you. I promise. I will say it's not just about the foods that you put in to your new lifestyle change. It's also about the foods that you are eliminating as well. So for me, I love fried chicken. I love a good fried chicken strip from Cane's and it tastes amazing. But the next morning, I will be more inflamed. I will hurt more because of that fried food. That's inflammatory. So you can be adding all of the quinoa, spinach, blueberries, pineapple, chicken, salmon into your diet all day long. But if you are perhaps also eating Cane's, McDonald's, Burger King, your progress may take a little longer and a little slower. So don't be dismayed. Just notice what foods are giving you life, what foods are bringing you joy, what foods are giving you more energy, and which foods are depleting you of the energy and of the healing that you so desire. Notice, be curious. And the last thing that I will say about the food you eat and the food you don't eat, really narrow down and focus in again on what works and what doesn't work. You may notice some foods are really serving you well in a particular season of your rehab journey. And then maybe later you need to tweak that process. So case in point, I remember for some time, I had a really difficult time with insomnia during my rehab. Now, whether that was directly affected by my neck pain or not, I'm not sure. But tossing and turning all night long is not fun. So what did I do? I researched more on the tools and the foods that I could implement in my body, in my lifestyle that would help me to sleep throughout the night. Because when I got really good sleep, like eight to 10 hours of sleep every night, I noticed that I was truly thriving with my neck pain being minimized. So I needed, it was necessary for me to really have that good night's sleep. And I was having awful insomnia. So research, again, be curious. And as I researched, I noticed that certain foods help promote sleep. That got me really excited because now I have options. For me, knowledge is power. I know that sounds so cheesy. Think about that 80s commercial, right? And the stars going across the screen, the more you know. (laughs) But it is so true. And what I noticed through my research was that there are foods that actually help promote sleep. And that got me excited because that means that I have options. So foods that help promote sleep include cherries, cottage cheese, walnuts, kiwis, and the like. Even teas like chamomile tea or lavender tea can help with this as well. So that's just one example of how you can implement and notice what anti-inflammatory resources you can put into your rehab process, right? So sleep is important to reduce inflammation. Food is important to reduce inflammation. And if you're noticing that things are working, some things aren't working, keep being curious, keep researching, keep being your best advocate. And in addition to food and sleep, I want to encourage you to really think about how you talk about yourself or the situation that you're going through. And the reason why I bring this up is because we tend to be frightful and scared during times and during seasons of injury. It can be disheartening. Like, what's going to happen next? Am I going to get through this? right? But your words, they contain weight. They have power. So if you're going through a flare-up, if you are going through a season of uncertainty with your health, I want you to again notice 
not from a judgmental standpoint of view, but notice and observe how you're talking to your body and how you're talking to yourself. So yes, food and sleep, they are important, but perhaps more importantly, the way we speak to ourselves during these times can shape our healing journey. I learned for me to replace thoughts like, this is too painful, I can't get out of this, with terms instead that created optimism, that created hope, such as, what can I do right now to ease this? It seems like a subtle shift, but it fosters a mindset that supports healing rather than being in distress. Another tidbit that I want to offer you today is possibly for you to keep a health journal, some sort of diary. For me, keeping a health journal has been another critical tool. It allowed me to track not just my physical symptoms, but also what I ate, how I slept, and how I felt emotionally every day. So this practice helped me see patterns that I would have otherwise missed, such as how a poor night's sleep could exasperate my pain the next day. I could then adjust my habits, more sleep, better diet, and directly see the results. The other reason why I want to encourage you to keep a health diary is because you can share these findings with your medical doctor. By having Dr. Bo kind of observe and notice and read through my health journal, he was able to see things that, again, perhaps I could overlook and that I missed. But this goes back to being an effective communicator, right? I'm communicating to him through this health journal of what's going on so he can be even a better, more effective doctor for me. Having that open line of communication really helps both parties through this rehab journey. As we are almost at the end of this episode, I want to give you a few more pointers. And this next one is very vulnerable of me to share with you. And I don't mind at all because if it helped me, possibly it can help you. And that's the point of all of this, right? So there were a lot of mornings where I was tossing and turning with excruciating pain. And during the early hours of one particular rough night, I found myself seeking comfort and clarity in prayer. Now, as I prayed, a message about cultivating a gentle spirit was placed on my heart. And this puts a smile to my face because I can hear God's voice clearly saying, gentle spirit. Now, this wasn't a phrase I used often, but it resonated deeply with me. And especially as I later reflected on scriptures like Philippians 4, 5 and Galatians 5, 22 through 23, these verses emphasize gentleness and kindness. This spiritual insight reminded me to treat myself with compassion and and <laughs> extend that same grace to others, no matter where they are in their journey. And when I heard gentle spirit whispered on my heart from God's voice, it was non-judgmental, it was gentle, it was loving, it was intimate, and it was kind. And I know it was his voice because that's not a phrase that would naturally come out of my mouth. And I'm so glad that he whispered that phrase on my heart because it gave me peace in that moment. So as you're going through this topsy-turvy season, show yourself grace. Show yourself and have a gentle spirit with yourself. And remember, there are people out in the world that you encounter through the grocery store, the car wash, the nail salon, that could be going through something right now and you have no idea what they are battling. So you're not going to be perfect at this because I know I'm not, but trying to approach each day 
with owning that gentle spirit, and it's going to take you really far. And the last thing that I will say about this gentle spirit theme is I encourage you to ask God what you could possibly learn through this season. Perhaps don't ask questions like, why is this happening to me? And I know that's easier said than done. Because I caught myself a few times during my rehab, why is this happening to me? And he lovingly put on my heart, well, if it's not this, it could be something else like cancer. And that was like a, whoa, okay. It put everything into perspective. Things will happen. We live in a fallen world. But he could use this time of turmoil, this season that you're in, for good. There's always a silver lining to tragedy. Trust him. Ask him how he can help you through this time. I'm telling you, he is your most intimate best friend, more so than any best friend can be on this earth. So ask, what can I learn during this time? And truly listen to what he's pointing you towards. Another thing that I thought was worth sharing is this idea, and it's a very broad stroke, but continue to be open and curious about various treatment options. This has been essential for me and for my healing. So at first, when I was working with Dr. Bo, I also had a registered masseuse on staff helping me as well. We were exploring and we were curious about various treatment plans. And I was seeing her through weekly massages plus Dr. Bo with fascia blasts. And I was seeing some improvement, but then a lot of flare ups along the way, too. Again, being effective, being an effective communicator helped Brittany, the masseuse, Dr. Bo, and myself realize that the massage was actually counterintuitive, and it was not helping the stability of my neck and my scapula. It was shifting things around too much. So again, be curious, be an observer, talk these things out. And what we decided to do was to nick the massages. They were not helping me. The minute we did that, we explored just focusing in on fascia blasts and chiropractic work and strength training. That was a huge, huge game changer for me. So be patient through the process and be curious. Just like exploring different musical styles and different articulation styles and vibrato colors in the practice room, I want you to be open to various health treatments that can lead you to the results that you want to achieve. It's all about patience curiosity, and sometimes stepping outside of your comfort zone to find what best aids your healing. And last but not least, I want you to show yourself grace and that gentle spirit again through this time by possibly adjusting your priorities during this season. If you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like you are still running full force right, on your current schedule, everything's packed in, and you are also trying to deal with your rehab journey, and you feel like it's too much, it could be time for you to offload some things off of your plate to create space, energy, and time for your healing. Now, I know I'm talking to a lot of type A'ers and perfectionists out there, And it's hard to let go. It's hard to release. It's hard to say no to things. But it's okay. If you can give yourself more time, space, and energy for healing when you return to your regular schedule, let me tell you what, you are going to be at it full throttle and maybe even stronger and happier with more energy than you had before. So it's okay to reprioritize. It's okay to find space for those doctor's appointments, for your exercises, for your sleep. You cannot do it all. 
So you might need to pause certain activities, step back from commitments, or even say no to opportunities that don't align with your current capabilities. It's okay, I promise. It's about focusing now on what's essential, and that's your health. That's you. Remember, it's okay to put yourself first from time to time. What's meant for you will come around at the right time when you're ready to embrace it fully. So that pretty much wraps up today's episode. As we close, Remember these key points as you explore and navigate your own healing journey. I want you to take proactive steps, advocate for yourself, communicate clearly, and embrace a holistic approach to your health. Remember, you are not alone. We are in this together. And if you need support, if you want the right resources, I can be with you every step of the way. And I'd love to hear from you. I would love to hear your stories, your questions, or any thoughts on today's topic. And please share. Let's keep this conversation going and build a supportive community together. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time. Are you a pre-professional or professional flutist looking for a community that gets you? Are you ready to dive deep, not just into music, but into everything that makes you who you are? Welcome to your new Flute Studio, Flute 360's Accelerator Program. In this group, we talk about the real stuff that matters, the human stuff, because when you flourish, so does your music and your career. Today's music industry is tough, and traditional institutions might not prepare you for its realities. That's where Flute 360 comes in, pulling the right people into your orbit to support you through this crucial season. Your network truly is your net worth, and we've built that network for you within this program. Flutists like you are transforming their lives both on and off the stage. Let your story be one of those successes. Join us for our upcoming mastermind and masterclass with a special guest artist on Saturday, June 29th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Time. Can't make it live? No worries at all. Every session is recorded, so you can tune in when it fits your schedule. Plus, you get pocket coaching, bonus videos and episodes, and access to a group feed with your new flute friends. All of this is tailored to fit your needs with our tiered registration options. Check out the links in the show notes. See you on June 29th. It's time to make music that resonates with your entire being. Let's talk about flute.